What's all this talk about the cloud? What are the different ways that we can use the cloud in our businesses? In this video, we're going to walk through the major benefits of cloud, the service model types that we can use, and the deployment methods that we can use. Once we finish this video, you're going to have a better understanding of the basics of cloud. But first, this is the first time that we're meeting. Welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my training and you want more, check out my website at johngood.com to get access to training courses without distracting interruptions or advertisements. Make sure that you check out my getting started link in the description and sign up for my newsletter to get a free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. You can also join me on the Discord server. The link is down in the description. All right, let's get into the video. Companies today are increasingly shifting either some or all of their infrastructure into the cloud. Due to this shift occurring, it's vital for cybersecurity professionals to increase their understanding of how this shift to the cloud increases the attack surface that we need to protect. Let's dive into more about the cloud. When we refer to the cloud, the key point is that the cloud consists of a pool of shareable resources that can be scaled either up or down depending on our needs. We can use the cloud for network security appliances, routing, operating systems, or even just application hosting. So what are the major benefits and why do companies really care about getting into the cloud? The first benefit is rapid innovation, which means that the cloud allows us to adopt new technologies much faster and that enables our organizations to move very quickly. Cloud also lets us be agile because if we have new demands, we can quickly scale up. We don't have to wait for an IT team to go through a full implementation project, and we can actually just click a button and add resources. The cloud's also scalable because cloud resources can be changed based on our usage. So if we need more resources, we can go up. If we need less, we can go down. There's also a cost savings with the cloud since we can scale up and down when we no longer need resources we can make sure that we're only paying for what we actually need. And the last major benefit is security. With cloud providers, we typically get phenomenal security because they have lots of dedicated staff. The security responsibility can vary between the provider and our company. And of course, if we develop an insecure application, we are still gonna have vulnerabilities in it. Now we're gonna transition to the different service models that you can use in the cloud. When you think of service models, this is the how that we're going to provide our services. The three different service models that you need to be aware of are on the screen here. So we have software as a service, we have infrastructure as a service, and we have platform as a service. Software as a service is when a provider builds and maintains an entire application for our use. These applications are typically accessed through a web browser, but they don't always have to be. For example, Microsoft Office 365 and Salesforce are considered SaaS or software as a solution applications. With these kind of cloud solutions, we don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure and we only have to focus on what we actually configure in the application. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to hit the thumbs up to like this video. And if you think of any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Also remember that this training and courses can be found on my website at johngood.com without distracting interruptions or advertisements. All right, let's get back to the content. Now, infrastructure as a service provides more control to the cloud customers, so us, in areas like compute power, storage, and networking, just to name a few. With this type of solution, think of a provider like Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure that allows you to run virtual machines or other infrastructure functions in the cloud. The virtual machines, of course, could be servers or other key infrastructure, but the key is that we don't have to maintain the physical box. So what does that mean? Well, that means we don't have to have the data center with the HVAC system. That can be a huge benefit. The third and final model is a platform as a service. Now this is somewhere between software as a service or infrastructure as a service solution. For this model, a good example would be if we developed an internal application at our company and then we ran it in the cloud. Now we might actually be able to run commands or other functions, but we aren't really responsible for that underlying operating system maintenance and we definitely don't have responsibility for the physical maintenance. When it comes to the cloud, we also have deployment models that we have to choose from. Specifically, deployment models address the where we are going to have our cloud hosted. The models that you need to know are public cloud, private cloud, community cloud, and hybrid cloud. Public cloud is typically what most people are referring to when cloud comes into a conversation. With public cloud deployments, any customer can deploy services but then operate on shared infrastructure. That's the key, shared infrastructure. We also might call this type of infrastructure multi-tenant infrastructure 
because many customers are sharing the resources. Examples include Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, and so on. Private cloud is different from public cloud because the infrastructure is used by a single customer instead of being shared by many customers. We can host internal private clouds ourselves or even have a third party maintaining the infrastructure. Just like when we own physical hardware, we might not always be utilizing all the available resources with a private cloud. This means it might not be cost effective for our company to actually have a private cloud. Community clouds are multi-tenant infrastructure. However, the tenants or the members share a mission or similar security requirements. For example, you might have a healthcare cloud where several different healthcare providers connect with the same security requirements, but they can't actually access each other's data. Hybrid clouds are a combination of at least two other models that we mentioned. A good example of a hybrid cloud would be that if we want to utilize processing power of Amazon AWS, but then we want to actually store the data in our own private cloud. The idea has to be that everything works seamlessly as one system even though we aren't using a single deployment model. Question of the day. Based on what you know, which cloud deployment model do you think is the most difficult to secure? Why do you think that model? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we walked through the major benefits of the cloud, the service model types that you can use, and then the deployment methods that you can use as well. Remember that cloud is here to stay, so you need to make sure to continue to evolve your knowledge about the cloud. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without distracting interruptions or advertisements, and I'll see you next time.